NASA's Moonshot 2.0 will explode nuclear and uranium. NASA plans to build a new nuclear reactor within five years on the moon. The stated purpose is to enable long-term lunar missions, but the real underlying purpose is radically more consequential. And there's a reason NASA's keeping it under wraps. 65 years ago, JFK laid the groundwork for the original moon landing. This nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon. The space race forced the US to develop brand new technologies, such as the rockets necessary to keep the Soviet Union at bay, and gave it a wartime economy by employing 400,000 people. And that's what JFK was after, earning the US decades of global dominance. The stakes are far higher this time. Putting a nuclear reactor on the moon by 2030 means kickstarting the domestic nuclear industry, re-onshoring supply chains, retraining a workforce, and jump-starting a permitting culture that's learned to say no. More importantly, we'll have taken the only route possible to dominate the AI race. China knows this. In April, they announced their own lunar reactor for 2035. Russia's joining them. The next moonshot is a winner-take-all round, which is why the world's reigning superpower will stop at nothing to take nuclear to the moon. The US obliterates the NRC roadblock. The first step to resuscitating the US nuclear industry lies with ending the organization responsible for killing it, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, or NRC. According to the former commissioner, Jeffrey Merrifield, the NRC is one of the primary obstacles impeding advanced nuclear reactor development. For example, GE submitted a reactor design for approval in 1989. The NRC didn't finish its review until eight years later. The latest reactor designed to be approved by the NRC cost $500 million and required a 12,000 page application. The NRC's primary job is to approve nuclear plants. Yet in the past 45 years, it's only issued two construction permits for nuclear reactors. By contrast, China's approved 10 new reactor constructions in a single day last year. If the US is going to beat China and Russia with a nuclear reactor on the moon by 2030, the NRC needs to be neutered first. A July 2025 executive order did just that, ordering the commission to review and approve new reactor designs in just 18 months. Now comes fewer dead months and more VIP express lanes. Another executive order went much further and for the first time, there's an expedited pathway to approve reactor designs. Designs that have been tested and certified by the Department of Defense, now war, or Department of Energy are auto-approved, with a rubber stamp and no further review from the NRC. The DOE and DOW aren't in the habit of impeding progress. They're the ones who get stuff done. With them in charge, regulation time is over. The DOE has already created a pilot program for three new test reactors and plans to achieve power at all three within one year. And two, they've mandated a working reactor on a military base by 2028. Support for the nuclear moonshot is now being led by two well-funded pro-nuclear agencies, which means it's time to demolish the final nuclear brick wall. Global capital flows to nuclear. For a decade, renewables gorged on subsidies while nuclear starved. The numbers are staggering. Solar and wind consumed over $25 billion in federal subsidies from 2016 to 2022. Nuclear? It was a rounding error. The result was predictable. Zero new nuclear plants while China built 37. That just ended. Violently. The one big beautiful bill yanks cash in nuclear's direction, drastically scaling back solar and wind subsidies while reversing an earlier sunset timeline for a nuclear power production tax credit. Treasury Secretary Scott Besant also demanded that the World Bank remove prohibitions on its support for nuclear. And in June 2025, the World Bank complied. It's a sea change in the global posture towards nuclear. For the first time since 1959, nuclear reactors are eligible for World Bank funding. Listen to that again. And not just that, the World Bank lifting its ban on funding nuclear provides political cover for private institutions to invest in nuclear unlocking trillions of dollars in capital. The NRC is gone. Subsidies are up. Global funding is flowing. 
If the government's ambitions are successful, there will be a US nuclear reactor on the moon in five years. Brace yourself for the new nuclear boom. As outlined in the executive orders, the US government is pushing for 10 new full-size reactors on Earth by 2030. That's not a pipe dream. Westinghouse is already committed to build those 10 new AP-1000 reactors in the US. Then, the goal is to quadruple the US nuclear reactor base in 25 years to 400 gigawatts of capacity. That would provide 65% of current US power needs, up from 20% securing energy independence, outpacing China, and powering our AI-driven future. Energy secretaries and multiple US presidents have called for this before, but now the time is right. The moves are necessary. The United States will get there because as Warren Buffett says, never bet against America. As a new multi-trillion dollar market opens up, there are plenty of ways to profit from it, including fuel, infrastructure, and investing in nuclear itself. But there's one other sector that's completely unready for this shift, and the US government is getting ready to defibrillate it into readiness. And when it happens, you'll wanna be ready too.